Now that we've talked about how to approach a book, let's talk about how to take notes. Let's start by thinking about why we take notes at all. That might seem obvious, but there's a few maybe subtleties that are worth considering. The first thing notes do for us is they actually help us understand what we're reading by keeping us actively engaged. It's very easy when reading to zone out, not catch everything, need to reread sections. Maybe we don't process as deeply as we should, but by taking notes, we force our brains to stay actively engaged. You'll find good research on how note-taking augments comprehension of what we read. Even if you threw away your notes after reading a book, the very act of having created them will help you uh, maximize the value you get from the book. Of course, we don't throw away our notes, we keep them, because the second thing notes do for us is help us with recall. If we periodically review our notes, keep them accessible, reflect back on them, it will significantly help us retain what we learn. And when you're in a program like SAS that entails reading dozens of books over a year, you will forget a lot. And that will become very clear when it comes time for comps and you're panicking, trying to scrape together notes, wishing you did a better job originally. Uh, the temptation in that case is to use someone else's notes. There's always that one student who takes meticulous notes, which is great, but you really need to take your own notes because it's the act of creating them and personalizing them in a way that makes sense to you and your brain that really gives you the full value. And this leads to a key insight that reviewing notes periodically is very helpful. The third thing notes can do for us is maybe not intuitively obvious, but it's making connections between notes, between books, between ideas. When you first start out taking notes, you're just trying to get the gist of today's book and you're not thinking about a bigger picture. But over the months, when you've read dozens of books, it's increasingly important to try and see connections. How are these different books related? Who's arguing against who? How has this idea evolved over time? And a good note-taking system will facilitate those kinds of connections and allow you to start mapping out a whole network of ideas. That becomes helpful for a fourth reason is that notes can help us organize our thinking in order to produce. If you were going to write an article or a thesis, you need to draw together various ideas, marshal evidence, and collate a lot of different ideas in one place. And a good note-taking system can be a very effective way to do that by allowing you a workspace for generating ideas and synthesizing, not just summarizing the day's book. And that gets at a uh, last function I'll mention of note-taking is it can really facilitate creativity. Anyone who does artistic work, and I include academics in that, knows that good art results from very deliberate, careful attention, as well as deep unconscious creativity. And we need to create space for both. If we're writing, Yes, we need to be very deliberate about crafting good sentences and structuring an argument, but the real magic happens when we sit down, get swept off into flow, and flashes of insight start bubbling up that we don't even know where they came from, and we start to pursue that idea on paper, and it leads to more insights. It's a very imaginative, creative process, and this is where our breakthrough scientific discoveries often come from, our great works of art, our great pieces of writing, and notes are a way to do that. The unconscious is very elusive. It will not reveal itself if you're just sitting there thinking. It's when we express, when we put a pen to paper, start typing up our notes, that we create the conditions in which the unconscious starts to express itself. So a good note-taking system can help facilitate that creativity. I encourage you as you think about notes, not just to look in the short term about getting today's book summarized but think about the long view you are going to read dozens or hundreds or thousands of books in your life many research papers marshal all kinds of evidence for different things you write strategy documents whatever it might be a good note-taking system can stick with you for life and become a knowledge management system that's almost an extension of your brain it's like something from a science fiction novel it augments your intelligence helps you recall helps you manage your forgetfulness I use my system all the time. It lives one 
finger swipe away from my main screen all the time. I interact with it constantly. It's been a huge asset for my own productivity. So I'm going to put some ideas out here for you if you want to run with them to kind of build out your own system. Maybe you don't want to go that big, but whatever you do, let's talk about some key properties of a good note-taking system. Number one, most important thing, you need to have one. If you don't have a system, you're going to struggle. Just pick something. Anything is better than nothing. You can start with just a sheet of paper. We'll talk about that in the next video. You need something you'll use. It's no good having the most complex, ornate, fancy note-taking system in the world if you don't use it because it's too complicated. You can always change later, make tweaks, just get something you'll use. It needs to be accessible. You can get to it while you're reading, while you're writing, whatever. It should be fairly flexible because you will go through different phases of trying different things and organizing differently. The more flexible it is, the more freedom you have to tinker. Uh, I already mentioned making connections across notes, not just being focused in a note. We'll talk more about that with some of the technologies available. It shouldn't be too distracting. It needs to support deep work and flow, not work against it. A lot of systems have maybe too many bells and whistles that can get in your way. Uh, it's very easy to get what uh, is called shiny toy syndrome, where you can spend hours and hours tweaking every last customized setting on your note-taking system, always trying new things. At the end of the day, our note-taking system is there to help us just get work done. It, it's not an end in itself. So we got to be careful with that. And there's a few other features I like. I like systems that are navigable and searchable, meaning once I take notes, I can find them again. When I'm researching a related topic, I can rediscover notes that I've forgotten. Um, I can search for what I need instantly. And some systems do not lend themselves well to this, in particularly paper, which I love paper. We'll talk about that in the next video. But um, unless we digitize our notes, it's very hard to be searchable. So there's trade-offs in play. You'll have to find what works for you. But keep some of those principles in mind as you go out and begin developing a system that works for you. In the next two videos, we will start looking at some of the different note-taking systems that are out there that I encourage you to experiment with.